Brendan Tobin sitting across from me, Jake Nowaker sitting where I'm sitting because that's me, and we're here to bring you UFC Vegas 66 best bets. But before we get there, BT, how you doing, brother? I'm good, buddy. It was uh, good to get tapped out back off the ground this week and uh, a very uh, exciting slash controversial card that we got to uh, preview and uh, definitely felt like uh, a lot of headlines coming out of that one. So that was, uh, you know, that always makes for good fodder afterwards. Oh, yeah. As you mentioned, Tapped Out's back, BetQL Network, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time every Saturday night. Brendan Tobin there, Sean Levine, who is not here. They're the hosts I produce. Great MMA show. We talk best bets all the time and news and future fights, all that good stuff. We even had Bryce Mitchell on last week. Anyways, before we talk best bets for this card, like you said, UFC 282 was last week. Let's recap that a little bit. I don't need to talk about the whole card. Uh, I think there was finishes in every fight except for the co-main event and the main event. That co-main event, dude, has me like, I, 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 I'm I, a big Patty fan, but I hate when injustices are done in MMA, in sports. And oh my God, dude, that was like one of the worst robberies I've ever seen. It was bad. Um, You know, I think that it, it was bad. And then the re- explanation and the reaction from Dana afterwards had me disappointed. And because- Patty. Patty, I get it's going into his demeanor. I kind of get that. Like you're going to do that. But, um, but with Dana saying like, oh, it's on Jared Gordon, terrible, you know, for him to have that strategy. It's like, well, you know, no, the sport is, you know, go win two out of three rounds. If that's the means of going to do it, submit your opponent or knock them out. And, you know, to always go to this thing of, oh, well, you never know how the judges are like all three judges saw something that everybody seems to disagree with what happened. So I don't know. I thought that was a, a very strange reaction just because I don't know why um, Patty Pimblett has garnered this kind of star treatment yet. Um, yeah. You know, everybody kind of thinks they walk in there. You know, I think Sean O'Malley gets a little bit of this arrogance of like, they think that they're going to be the next Conor McGregor and they think they're going to be this and they think they're going to be that. And not, none of them have done what that guy did to garner the star power and all of that benefit of the doubt that he got eventually and the preferential treatment that he gets now. So I don't know. It was disappointing. It was one of those things where you really hope as a guy who loves boxing uh, and UFC, like that was a very boxing night for the promotion. Absolutely. Um, And I just got a feel for Jared Gordon, man, because I I, I was so mad. I went to rewatch the fight the next day, rewatched it, scored it again, two times in a row. I scored it 30, 27 for Jared Gordon. I just, I don't understand it. And I, I got a feel for him because win or lose, Patty was going to keep getting the star treatment. Jared Gordon takes that L. That's going to be forgotten about in two weeks, man. And that just sucks. I hate that. Um, more boxing drama, as you said, so to speak. Main event, Magomed and Kalayev going up against Polish power, Jan Blachowicz. That sucked too. Draw. I had Magomed winning regardless. You hate to see a a vacant belt go to a draw and remain vacant. Yeah, totally. Uh, Agree. I thought Uncle Live did enough to get the win. Certainly is not like the most memorable title fight of all time. But not only does it, you know, get left on the scorecards and he's not able to get the belt, but then the, the, the boss comes and basically says that fight was so uninteresting to me that I'm just moving on to another title fight. And so if you're Magomed, You're now in this spot where you didn't lose. You've been on kind of a long climb as it is to get to this spot. And now you're going to be put in this blender of, okay, Jamal Hill and Glover are going to fight. Fine, I'm down for that fight. But then Yuri's going to eventually come back and he's going to get the shot, obviously, because he was the standing champ before he left the belt. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you're on Goliath, like, what do you do? Like, what makes sense for him? Where does he go? There's a lot of souls. You know, it's not as big, I think, for Jan. Jan's old. Like, all right. I don't know how many more crack. He was kind of given the the crack at it anyway. He was the one who was gifted the situation. But, you know, if you're Uncle Live, that has to be unbelievably frustrating to be in the spot right now. And based on his po- post-fight speech, it certainly was frustrating saying he's done with the UFC or done with his con. Whatever he was saying, he was frustrated and rightfully so. Um, but, yeah, as a fan, that sucks, man. Vacant belt. Luckily, friend of the tapped out, Jamal Hill gets the shot against Glover in I think February. So that'll be cool. But and then you got to feel for Anthony Smith, man. I mean, there's just no, no one won here really, you know, maybe except for Jamal Hill. 
Yeah, I, I, you know, good for Jamal. I think it's it's cool that he's going to get that shot. But I'm with you. The the division, you know, we've been talking about this on the show. It's been probably the weirdest division by a long shot uh, mm-hmm. for a while now since John Jones hasn't been active in it. And you know, between them trying to find the right guy, between it being rained by old guys, and then Yuri getting it, but then Yuri getting hurt, like it's uh, it it just feels like it can never quite get off the ground. Um, and then just get this uh you know, ball rolling of like, who's the guy let's have some lineage. Let's have some title defenses. It just yeah. can't happen. Like the shadow of John Jones just still weighs over two Oh five. It's the goat, baby. That's the goat. Um, but yeah, man, a messy situation. Hopefully UFC two eighty three. that all gets sorted out. Um, Patty Pimblett. I would love if they fed him daily at Sephora, but we'll see. Cause that'd be a quick fight. I would too. I mean, like, look, Taporia, I, I feel for Bryce Mitchell because you know, he, he took that opponent late and that was tough, but you know, I don't understand why they don't like, you don't know how good Patty Pimblett is going to be. I think you, you know, if you're telling me eventually you're going to give him to the number one lightweight in the world or number one, and he's going to go and, and cruise. Okay. I mean, maybe I don't see it, but maybe you're telling me that he's going to get to that spot. I think for Taporia, like if he's going to go and, and show what he's shown so far, why not give that guy an opportunity? He's shown himself to be a great talker. He's well-rounded. Um, I think that guy is, would be would be a fine guy to get the rub from Patty Pimblett, but I'm with you. I think that that'd be a crucial mistake for him. Oh yeah, matchmaking era and Dana Dana loves Patty, so he'll he'll be safe from that matchup for a while. But anyways, UFC Vegas 66 coming up this weekend, December 17th. The last night of fights we have until January 14th. We are coming up on the long night, as we like to call it as MMA fans. So that kind of stinks, but pretty good card this weekend to send us off. I have one, two, three. Four bets. One of those is a parlay. Uh, you know how I like to do. Start at the bottom. Work my way up. So, say no more. Here we go. Do it. Opening up with my only dog of the night. David Dvorak coming in. Plus 200 versus Manel Kopp. Minus 250. All over Dvorak here, man. Three and one in the UFC. Uh, both of these guys, both Cap and Dvorak, both lost to Nicolau. So, if you put some MMA math in perspective there... Cancel that loss out. David Dvorak's 3-0 and in the UFC then, but 3-1 and in the UFC. Amazing grappling. Super good at, like, distance control, striking. Very scrappy, squirrely flyweight. Uh, I, I simply think his pressure and pace is going to be too much here. Cap, on the other hand, he's been exciting when he got in the UFC, but he started out 0-2. And something I've noticed from him, he's not super active in the cage. He really relies on the power, the flash, the I'm the next big signing for the UFC type of fight style. Not going to work here, man. I think that plus 200 dog is going to come at his face. Yeah. I mean, like, look, if you're in a position like that, he's looking for that opportunity to find something crazy like he has been in his last couple of knockouts. I can understand, you know, you think a guy in David's going to be, uh, you know, staying more active and as opposed to Manel looking for that home run cut, which, you know, he's, you know, gotten the last couple of times around. But, you know, it could be a big ask because those guys who are, you know, those sensational knockout artists, it can be a tough thing to, uh, put your money on because you know maybe the opportunity is just never there for you Dvorak hasn't been knocked out since before UFC long ago in his professional career so I I I don't like him getting clipped here I think if Cap's going to win it's going to be by a decision but based on their activity in the cage based on Dvorak's skill on the mat and standing up I think he's better here I think there's a little bit of hype behind this minus 250 and yeah I'm going to try to expose it a little bit you know I like my curtain jerkers I know that's that you do nobody loves a curtain (laughs) jerk quite like you my thing, baby. Prelim gang. Uh, moving on here, we have a non Khabib related Nurmagomedov, Saeed Nurmagomedov, coming in as a pick 'em minus one ten a piece, going up against this is a name, bro. Sa- Said Yukub Kakramanov. Mm. Let's go. Who's, who is this one? Is this Brendan Fitzgerald's responsibility this week, or is it John Anik? Who has to? Uh, John Anik's the this? goat. So if he if if it's him, no problem. But it's a it's a fight night, so it might be might be Fitzgerald. That's a mm. tough name, Kakramanov. That's not that bad. Anyways, I think, I think the first name is throwing me more. Saeed Yukub. Yeah, you just skip the first name. Just call him Kakramanov, and it's easy. You sound mm. good, too. It's not like a William or like a Smith. It's Kakramanov. Nobody's going to question you. That's yeah, I think it's always the Vs at the end of names that'll shake you, isn't it? Anything Russian or Eastern European, it's – I try. You know, I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm not I'm not bred to pronounce those names. Um, But I, I totally think Saeed Nurmagomedov is a good – Good pick here at Pick'em Odds. Uh, 
as I said, not related to Khabib. Don't let that fool you. But he still has good grappling. He was born and raised in Dagestan. It doesn't matter who you are over there. If you're a milkman, a paper boy, or a fighter, you can wrestle. Saeed can wrestle. We've seen him grapple, and we've seen him have constant submission threats in his fight. But he's a striker. He stands out amongst that Dagestani crew because he's the best striker amongst them. Super flashy, great distance control. I think he's going to piece Kakramanov up here. Kakramanov is, is a big, or excuse me, Nurmagomedov for Kakramanov is a big step up in competition here. Um, I, I think Kakramanov comes in a little bit reckless, a little bit wild with his punches and just his style that we've seen in the UFC so far. It's paid off, but going up against such a talented counter striker as Nurmagomedov, I don't think it's going to work for him. So pick a mods, feed me the Nurmagomedov. It's got to be frustrating for him to have that last name, though, if he's not related. Like, honestly, yeah. you're talking about like, all this time, in. just something. The- and you know what? It feels like he's good enough. Like what? You know, you you go out there. It's sixteen and two right now. Like, why can't I be part of the family? Who who right. who outcast me? And it was it like, you know, I, I don't know. It's just it, it's very disappointing. I feel like he's got to be looking at this, and be like, really? Out of all the families that had to get big, you think you, you think like-, like his father, like back at like the uh, back at like the family reunions, he's just like, we would have good to the mug in the middle of, and all of a sudden he come along. They take family name. <laughs> They take family tree from us. I'm just picturing them like down. out at the schoolyard, like Habib and Islam and all the boys are getting on the bus. And then Saeed's yep. like, hey, can I come? And they're like, no, no, no little boy no. Go over there. <laughs> oh, look at you. You're so good. You can box. <laughs> Funny guy. You think you had striking. If Sambo was easy, we call it boxing, my friend. Yep. I'm telling <laughs> you, man. No, that's got to be rough, you, man. You grew up, didn't even wrestle bear. We don't accept you. He just struck with the bear, and then Khabib comes over and takes the bear down, takes Saeed down, and calls it a day. I would go, dude. I mean, hey, Saeed's no Khabib, but I, he's still getting that W here against Kakramanov. I mean, Kakramanov's first down in the UFC. Coming at you live. This next bet, BT, I have some strong feelings on, mainly because I feel like my man, Armin Terzukian, that's a hard name too. Jesus Christ. That is an hard name, yep. I feel like he got robbed in his last fight against Matus Gamrat. Uh, I thought he had more he control. Did. Yeah, I mean, he 100%, did. right? He 100% got robbed in that fight. More control, more strikes, more damaging strikes. I think maybe in that third and final round, or maybe, well, I don't remember, maybe it was a five-round fight. But towards the end, he started to waver just because his gas tank failed a little bit, but did not agree with that decision. So that here is making me a little biased, but I think that's a good thing because his opponent, Demir is Magulov, plus 145, not as experienced, five years older than Tazukian. And my big thing is he's a decision machine. In the UFC, he's only had decision victories. He relies on his grappling to hold people down. You're not holding Armin down, dude. You're not holding him down. And if you can get him down, get past that power striking, yeah, good luck. I think uh, Armin's going to completely outclass his Magulov here. Minus 175, as long as it stays under minus 200. You can count me cashing that all day. You usually got to feel with him, too. Like, after you have a decision like that go against you, like, there's got to be some you know, level of wanting to go with it with a devil level, uh, level of aggression too, sure. because like, how could you trust after a fight like that? You're like, I'm going to leave that to the judge, a five round fight. And after last that weekend. time, he's going to probably be pedal to the metal on this one too. So yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, who knows what that influence could have on guys. You know, you just watch a big heavy time uh, pay-per-view in the same state. And you're like, you don't know who the hell is going to pick what when it comes to these fights, um, which, you know, might lead to some, you know, more action. It might not. I'm just saying like personally with him, he just got bit on it. Um, and so it, it just might be in the back of his head going into this one. It, it very well could be. Um, and I, I, I don't know if you have this in front of you. Uh, my internet's being funky, but was that Armin and Gamrot? Was that a main event five round fight? It was. So this is a three round fight, man, in a smaller octagon. If he's going to come out, like a bat out of hell, this is the fight to do it. And I think this is the opponent to do it against. But that, that aside, I, I just really like this matchup for Armin. I think there's many avenues for him to win. Is Magulov, on the other hand, he likes to hold people down and grapple and put them against the cage, as I said. And I, I don't think that's happening in this fight, especially in a smaller cage for only three rounds. Well, uh, yeah, man, I think that for him, that that that's all going to play into it. And, you know, for him, I, I remember like leading into that, like yeah, a lot of the story was on Gamrot. Like people were saying, well, is he going to be kind of that next sneaky guy that's going to pull into it? But it's still got a feel for you. Like you go into that, and you're like, man, really? That 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 didn't go my uh, that didn't go my direction, you know. And then he has the loss to uh, you know Gamrot has the loss to Daryush, so maybe mm-hmm. he's thinking to himself, all right, you know what? Now like karma comes around, and this is my time to to kind of skyrocket up. 
I would love it, man, because I think Armin is next up, man. I think that kid is no joke at all. Uh, and I think he's 26 years old, too. So young. Anyways, moving on. Uh, this is my final bet, my parlay. Talking about a pair of another two young guys. Jake Matthews, minus 250. You pair him with Amir Albazi, minus 500, which is kind of crazy. Uh, that parlay comes out to a minus 148. Those odds are on bet MGM. I'm sure they'll change towards the end of the week. But minus 148 for Matthews and Albazi. Love that parlay. Jake Matthews going up against Matthew Semmelsberger. You look at the striking here. That's where the fight's going to take place. Semmelsberger struggles against technical striking. We saw that in his last fight against Morono. Matthews, on the other hand, excels against people who look for the power in his last fight against Fialo. So I think Jake Matthews here, the young kid, is going to come in. More potential, more prospect power growing here, taking over Semmelsberger. If the fight goes to the ground, the kid can wrestle too. I'm not worried about that at all. But on the other side, Amir Albazi, I'll keep this one short, going up against uh, Ale- so many names, man. Alessandro Costa, plus 350. Dana White Contender Series kid, completely going to get outclassed here. Albazi's going to outwrestle him, outstrike him. It doesn't matter. Short notice fight. Albazi, Matthews, safe parlay. So no early action on the main event. Are you still like digesting that one or you just think it's a stay away for you going into it? I'm going to ask you about that one because are you ready to talk about that one? Do you like my parlay? Yeah, I like it, dude. I'm okay, always talk about the main event. <laughs> main event, dude. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm up in the air on that one because I really like Jared Kennedy and I really do not like Sean Strickland. Um, personality wise or just yes. fight style? Personality wise. Personality. Gotcha. Wise. Sean, come on. Hey, you can like Sean Strickland because he's, he's a goof, but. Oh, my God. I could never be in the same room as that guy. Jared Cannonier, friend of the show. Love that guy. Killer Gorilla. Great character. Great person. Fighting style is what scares me here. Jared Cannonier, we saw of late. Very good on on his stuff again. Technical striking's back. Power's back. Goes forward. No problem. Haven't always seen that in the past. Sean Strick, on the other hand, we know what he's going to do. He's going to walk forward and throw his jab, 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 straight, jab, 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 straight, and just not stop. So, I don't know. I have a really hard time seeing how this one goes down. I mean, look, I, Sean Strickland is uh, is a fascinating guy because, yeah, he's one of these guys that I feel like has talked his way up and uh, along with some good performances and things like that. I got to wonder how the hell is he feeling confidently because he says, I'm going to have the same game plan. And it's one thing to say that, but you took a bomb like he did against Bejeda, like rocked. What is he going to feel like? Because Cannoneer is no slouch when it comes to power. Like the guy nope. hits really, really hard. Um, and I thought, you know, the one thing I'll say, like, I know that his fight against Izzy, people were walking out of the building and the guy never stopped trying. I mean, it was just, he couldn't, oh, he yeah. couldn't touch Izzy. Izzy was just in his bag as far as defense was concerned. And I honestly thought that fight got a worse rap than it deserved. I mean, it's not like these guys weren't trying to have some action. It's just, you know, if you have one guy who was very good at dodging the other guy and maybe the return fire is not going to be as strong because he knows if, if killer gorilla hits me with something, my lights are going to go out. Yeah. Sean, I just don't see as elusive. Like he's got that good defense with, uh, with the, you know, that could frustrate you with the range and things like that. But again, like, I, I don't know, man, it scares me putting my money on somebody who just got knocked out like that. And he's yeah. going in there with a guy who's maybe, not as dangerous as beta with a one shot, but he's still pretty damn strong and pretty damn dangerous. Um, so yeah, I'm leaning, I'm leaning cannoneer on this one. Do you have the odds in front of you? Hold on, I can get it one page over. Uh right now it is cannoneer minus 106, Strickland minus 120. Oh, see, I didn't do any research for this fight because I didn't I didn't, you know, off the, the names, I'm not gonna bet that. But Jared Cannoneer, even if I had to pick him. Now, you just got me thinking about this, because Jared Cannonier, man, he's coming off of that Derek Brunson win, right? Where he knocked he's out, out Derek Brunson with the ground and pound. He knocked out Derek Brunson, and then he lost to Izzy. Uh, the Izzy fight was after that. I, I'm Izzy not going to count the Izzy fight, man, because Izzy would piece up Strickland the same way. Yeah, they both lost on the same card. That was, uh, I don't know, it was 276 in July. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so, okay, dude, honestly, I'm almost all over that minus 106 Jared Cannonier line. Are you kidding me? That's like... Because Jared Cannonier is the better striker here. If you Strickland's relentless with it, and you know he's mm-hmm. a tough guy with the chin, as we always heard. And then we yeah. saw that last fight. Jared Cannonier, man, he's he's got probably as much power as Pereira if he can land that strike. He's just not as technical and precise with it. So I got to give the edge on the feet to Jared Cannonier. And then where we've seen Jared Cannonier struggle, other than Izzy, is when people wrestle him, when people put him against the cage and frustrate him. Sean Strickland's not much of that guy. He likes to spar. He likes to go in there and spar with you. 
I, I think minus 106, minus 110, minus 120 even, whatever it gets to. Jared Cannon here, I, I like that a lot. I tend to agree. Um, you know, the only thing, I mean, I don't know. Strickland's just not much of a finish threat for him. I don't see that oh. going to be the case. Um, unless he just has that jab that's so frustrating and Cannon here just doesn't want to engage anymore because he's just getting peppered with it, but... You know, I just feel like you were just in something like that with just a much more complex riddle and is and Izzy, and he kept coming forward and he kept trying to bring action. I just feel like Sean's going to be a lot easier to find. There'll be more moments for him uh, to win rounds against the judges. Um, not saying that he goes and gets the knockout, but I certainly think that that's going to be more favorable for him. He just seems like a, a more all action guy that would be pleasing for that too. So. If he does knock him out, that's there for him, and I feel like over a five round fight, that's going to be. Uh, that's going to be more favorable for him to get to win rounds unless he just, you know, unless he's just completely flustered and Sean has something else to the table that we don't know about. But, um, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. So I don't know what I, I wouldn't know uh, why I would put my money on that. The last thing I'll say about this fight is something I probably shouldn't say because it's MMA math and we all know how MMA math works out. It doesn't, but it's a different perspective for this fight. Jared Cannonier in his last fight went up against Adesanya. I think on one judge's scorecard, he took two rounds. On the other two, he took one round. Not saying much. If you break that down, swap out Izzy. In a five-round fight, can Jared Cannonier take three rounds over Sean Strickland compared to one or two over Izzy? I think easily. So I think that five rounds might be key here, man. I think that's a big deal for Cannonier if it goes to decision. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's, it, you know... He always seems to come forward. He's always going to look for something. He looks for, you know, sometimes the quirky things, even against Brunson, like things weren't going well for him. And then he just adjusted and made a great adjustment in the second round and figured out a way to finish that thing off. So he's just, you know, he's not going to be shook anything. I think that Strickland could say this week, he's just um, as balanced as it comes with all of that stuff. So no, I, I, I just, and I just like, I like you, it's, I just genuinely, I think, like I'm better as a prospect and a fighter anyway. I know he's been around for a while, but I just think that I, I just like his skill set over this in this match particularly. Well, we shall see, my friend. It all goes down December 17th this Saturday. I think it starts at 4 o'clock Eastern time prelims and 7 p.m. main card. ESPN Plus. Uh, also, for Tapped Out this week, we're hopefully getting Jerry Cannonier himself on the show. Um, so stay tuned with that. But otherwise, BT, man. Thank you so much. Can't wait to cash these bets. I hope this fight card goes in because January 14th, that's a long time without any fights. You're not excited for Bellator versus Ryzen on uh, on New Year's Eve? Much more excited for Cage Fury 116 in Philadelphia. Hey. So. <laughs> All right, BT. Have a good day, brother. See you, dude.